So the terms non-small cell and small cell really go back to the 1970s when they were the two major types. Um, and there were some differences in terms of how they behaved and some differences in terms of which one occurred in smokers, small cell being more common, non-small cell not necessarily uh, linked to uh, smoking. Also treatment was different, so we got into the habit of calling small cell versus not small cell, hence the term non-small cell. There are multiple subtypes in the landscape of lung cancer, and sometimes this can be very confusing because uh, you'll hear all this different terminology. Uh, it's really important to just break it up into some very, very discrete buckets. Uh, lung cancer, that's the name of the disease. Then we have the first subtype, which divides it into small cell and non-small cell. And that's a really sophisticated uh, way of classifying them because back in the 40 or 50 years ago, people would look under the microscopes and they see really small cells that were hyperpigmented or had a lot of, uh, a lot of coloring in them and other cells that weren't. So that's how we got this very broad classification between small cell and not so small cell. Uh, then within the non-small cell realm, there are other subtypes. And this is based on what shape the cells look like. So there's one called adenocarcinoma. There's another type called squamous cell carcinoma. These are all subtypes of non-small cell, which are all part of the lung cancer sort of classification. Uh, and that is important to know. A lot of what we try to do when we diagnose and perform tests to see uh, what a diagnosis is, is to inform your clinician, your doctor, uh, what types of therapy should be done. And so everything leads up to the clinic. And so anything a pathologist is doing, anything a radiologist is doing, all those folks, this is where we need this information to help us. Now, what's one of the most relevant things? Well, once we've classified what your diagnosis is, whether it's a squamous cell, adenocarcinoma, small cell, then the clinician, your provider, has to sit and discuss what is the best therapy. Now, in the past, it's just been choose your chemotherapy. Chemo doublets, either carboplatin or cisplatin with a different drug. And we'll get into terminologies in that later in this program. But for early on, after we get a diagnosis, these days, just like in breast cancer, we need to have markers, biomarkers. These are characteristics that exist in the tumor that help a clinician decide what is the best therapy to match that up. And that's as close as we have to this precision medicine that exists out there. And that's really important for anyone to know when they're facing this diagnosis and meeting their clinician, their provider for the first time. It's important to realize that although we're trying to break these classifications of lung cancer into buckets, there are a bunch of different subtypes. Adenocarcinoma is the most popular one under non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer. Yes, that's a mouthful. Uh, but there are also things like large cell, neuroendocrine, and if you go to a textbook, which I'm not going to recite for you today, there are other histologies, as we call them, or classifications under non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer.